Hey everyone, I'm back with another video on Ghost of Tsushima Legends. This time I will be taking a look at the samurai and going over a great build for survival mode. I've tried several different combinations of gear and techniques, so I will go over what I found to be the most effective build for staying in combat as long as possible and essentially stopping the enemy on its tracks. The samurai is a class that excels at being in the middle of combat and staying engaged, protecting a circle and dishing out damage while also being able to take a ton of punishment. So let's go over each skill and why it's the best for this build. Gear is probably not something that you will be able to match one for one, but I will go over what I have equipped and why later. Okay, let's start. First of all, I'm taking the Siphon Health skill called Spirit Pull and not the Explosive Blade and there are several reasons for this. Number one is uptime. Once you pop Spirit Pull, it will remain active as long as there is an enemy around you for the entire time, which is definitely not the case with Explosive Blade. Whenever you are kicking an enemy, shoving them, using a ghost weapon or performing an assassination or critical strike, the explosive effect will not trigger, which means throughout a match, there will be several instances where you pop this and maybe use it half as much as you could. This reduces its effectiveness significantly, especially when you're fighting heavies and you're kicking them repeatedly with the moon stance. This to me is a big downside and you also need to consider that Spirit Pull does deal a small amount of damage. Obviously it's not as significant as the Explosive Blade, but that healing and damaging effect is going on all the time, even if you're knocked down or performing other actions. And that's why I find it to be clearly superior and way more suited to the Samurai's role, which is tankiness, not trying to be the top DPS for the team. If you've mastered combat to the point that you really don't need any healing or you're already getting more than enough from your gear or party members, then go for the explosive katana, but in matches with randoms where you might actually not be getting any healing at all, Siphon will come in clutch and help you stay in combat much, much longer. The next skill I'm using is Samurai Unleashed, and this one is pretty simple. It will decrease the cooldown on Spirit Pull, which is 36 seconds, by 15%, so around 5.5 seconds, allowing you to use it more often. The other options are increasing your health by 25 or increasing your melee damage by 10%. And once again, this comes down to consistency. 25 more health is not a whole lot and being able to heal more often is more useful. So it comes down to either increasing melee damage or having more healing. The 10% melee damage increase, while pretty good, will not make a huge difference in most engagements, and here's why. This isn't a game where you're attacking at an incredibly fast rate, so that 10% damage, while somewhat significant, will not necessarily reduce the amount of hits that you need to perform to take down an enemy. So say each attack you perform does 50 damage, and you're fighting an enemy that has 500 HP. You need 10 hits to kill that enemy. If you get the 10% damage increase, that won't reduce the total number of hits that you need to perform, since 9 hits will deal 495 damage, and you will still need that 10th last hit to down the enemy. This might sound like some sort of extreme example, but think about how often you are hitting enemies that have just a tiny amount of health. In those cases, your melee damage increase is doing absolutely nothing of value. Meanwhile, that cooldown reduction is not only better in terms of percentage reduction, being 15% versus 10%, but it's also active all the time, which basically means you start with Spirit Pull available at the start of every wave. Spirit Pull is active for 10 seconds and has a 36 second cooldown, which when reduced to 30.6 seconds, that basically means you can have it active siphoning health and damaging enemies every 20 seconds. On the second row, I'm picking Resolve Increase to get a total of 4 resource available, which you can then increase through gear. Being able to parry weapons becomes absolutely irrelevant once you get to the toughest waves in survival, and if you pay attention to the callouts, you can easily dodge most of the arrows anyway. Critical defense is solid, but being able to heal means you will rarely ever be at low health, so this technique becomes absolutely irrelevant. 
that one additional resolve is 33% more than you already have and will allow you to use your ultimate more often. Okay, this next one really does depend on what gear you have. If you have good legendaries, definitely consider taking the perk that allows you to equip two legendaries at once, because some of them are absolutely awesome and will provide a significant advantage in any match. I have a legendary katana which has every stance available and a firebomb that will also heal nearby allies so that's pretty much a no-brainer to pick up. However, if you don't have two good legendaries for your build, then get the additional two charges for Hachiman's Fury. This will increase your strikes from 3 to 5, which will make a pretty significant difference if you manage to hit every strike. Heavenly Strike is pretty much a one-hit Hachiman for one resolve, so that's pretty much redundant and straight up worse than getting five hits for three resolve. So pick whatever is best for you, either Frenzy or Legendary. Now let's move on to the gear. And as I mentioned earlier, you won't necessarily have the exact same gear, but I do want to talk about what you should be focusing on. For the Blade or Katana, I highly recommend getting both the Moon and Water Stance for the Samurai. This will allow you to stagger any heavies and shielded warriors very fast, and they are by far some of the most common enemies that you'll be facing. Being able to cancel and stagger heavier Onis when they do their AoE attack is extremely useful when you're trying to keep control of a sector, and the Water Stance allows you to deal a lot of damage to those shielded Onis as well. So overall, it is by far the best stance combination that you can have. In terms of properties, both for the Katana and any other items, try to roll for anything related to Resolve Gain or Stagger Damage. Staggering enemies is extremely important since that will cancel their attacks and render them a non-threat for a short amount of time. In my case, I have Resolve and Stagger Damage paired with Burning Blade, which isn't the best to be honest. Poison Damage affects Stagger, which is better than just dealing some additional damage in my opinion. And also, there are multiple ways to catch enemies on fire, but not really too many to add poison to them, so I think just poison is overall better. Keep in mind that assassins can deal 50% additional damage to staggered enemies, so yeah, stagger damage is more important than straight up melee damage, I think. Now moving on to ranged equipment, you should barely ever be using the bow, maybe to get some headshots and gain a small amount of resolve if you can do that before jumping in the middle of a group of enemies. So basically use whatever you think it's best and try and get ranged resolve gain. Moving on to the charm, I have one that has combat regeneration which will regenerate health outside of combat. This is really useful and you will see the effect get triggered as you move from one sector to the next. This build is about getting as much sustain as possible, so either this or something like Leeching Parry are your best choices here. Leeching Parry will restore health and provide additional resolve when you perfect parry, so if you are good at pulling them off, that will allow you to use Hachiman more often, which is always good. The amount of health that you get restored with the perfect parry isn't that significant, it's maybe 15 or so, so it really does depend on how much you can reliably perform the parries. Okay, Ghost Weapon number one. I highly recommend that you get the bomb for this one. I have one of the legendaries which heals any nearby allies, so it's really awesome to have that as Samurai. Kunai's will stagger enemies, which is always welcome, and this goes back to basically use whatever is the most powerful item that you have, but the bombs I think are overall better. If I didn't have the legendary bomb, maybe I would use these level 105 kunais, which will throw regular enemies to the ground because that gets a similar effect, but the bombs are really good at gaining resolve and clearing out sectors when you need to solo defend them, so yeah, go with the bombs if you can. And lastly, and this might surprise some, but the Caltrops are really, really good. The Healing Guard is overkill for this build and will reduce the number of options that you have for dealing with enemies, as well as gaining resolve, which is, you know, pretty bad. Yes, they will increase your tankiness, but at the expense of being able to deal with enemies more effectively, so unlike other health versus damage sacrifices for the build, the Gerd doesn't make the cut. The Caltrops go really well with the Samurai playstyle, as they will cripple and slow down enemies going through it, staggering them and putting basically every regular non-Oni enemy out of combat for a short time. 
If you pop these in the middle of a choke point, it will act as a barrier and keep enemies from reaching the sector, which is obviously extremely useful. Try to use them outside the sector and not on them if you can. If you get a bunch of regular units with them, you will be able to finish them off very easily, which will fill your resolve super fast for using Hachiman's Fury. Smoke bombs can be really good if you have an assassin, but the reason that I don't use them on the samurai is because the stealth takedowns are pretty slow for this class, which will leave you open for damage for longer, and you won't deal a whole lot of damage to the tougher enemies with them, so it's just not as useful. Once more and more enemies start spawning in the waves, your lack of speed and damage while doing these takedowns really becomes an issue. So there you go, that's the build. In terms of playstyle, you want to be anticipating the waves as much as possible. Try meeting the enemies as far away from the sector as you can and holding them off. In most cases, you want to prioritize taking down the easier targets down first to fill up your resolve and then use Hachiman's Fury to quickly deal with the tougher enemies. This really does depend on the situation though. Say there's three spearmen and only one heavy oni around, I would use Hachiman to deal with the spearmen and then take down the oni quite easily with the moon stance and not the other way around. When preparing for a wave, don't place your caltrops around a choke point before you know for sure that the next wave is coming through there because they will time out and disappear before you can use them again. So using them as a sort of preemptive trap won't work. If you see a new attack targeting a sector that no one is defending, try being the first one to fall back. If you play carefully, you should be able to hold off the enemy effectively while regenerating health and delaying the capture until your allies arrive. Don't be overly aggressive and do focus on the easier targets, since those will require less hits, fill your resolve faster and allow you to cancel out of attacks more easily if you need to roll out of the way. If you use Hachiman, Try not to end the last strike near one of the tougher enemies, because they will take you out while you slowly get back up. In terms of shrine offerings, I recommend using the bear, wolves or ignite enemies. The bear is by far my favorite because they will sometimes stunlock extremely tough enemies entirely on their own. But both them and the dogs can be kind of unreliable, so you'll sometimes see them roaming around doing nothing of value. Ignite works really great since you'll often be completely surrounded by enemies and you shouldn't really be picking up regenerate health unless no one else is because someone like an assassin or a hunter might need to pop it off to avoid death. You shouldn't really need it given the amount of healing that you already have. Okay, that will be all. I hope you enjoyed this guide and if you have any tips or cool builds to share, please leave your comments down below. I appreciate any and all feedback. Thank you for watching and I hope I will catch you on the next one.